<laughs> what can I say? Um, we go back to, gosh, I'm definitely going to tell my age here, but we go back to the uh, spring, fall of 1978 when I decided to take my talents to Charlottesville. And uh, this amazing student athlete, scholar athlete, uh, was one of the leaders on the team. And um, Val Ackerman, commissioner of the Big East, um, she just uh, took me in, and we've been close friends ever since. Um, you can look at her bio and all of that, but I'll say the one thing that people don't know is that this is the woman that turned me on to Bruce Springsteen. Uh, I've been a big fan <laughs> Uh-oh. ever since. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but she's done everything in the world of sports business, and I'm very blessed to call her a dear friend. Well, we have her on the line, and uh, Commissioner, I'm going to start by saying, what's this story about Bruce Springsteen? Go, go ahead and feel <laughs> oh these on that. Exactly. Tell us. Oh, my God. My, my deepest secret, which um, <laughs> my proudest secret, too, is I <laughs> Hi guys, it's, uh, I'm, I'm, it's an honor to be on, and um, I, I can't say enough about Dr. Stroman here, my one of my dearest friends. We go, she said, way, way, way back uh, to our student athlete days at UVA, yeah. back in the, back in the day <laughs> when uh, women's basketball and women's sports weren't weren't what they um, weren't what they are today, but. Happy memories all the same. So uh, very, very excited when she asked me to join you all this morning. Uh, that's unbelievable. Well, Commissioner, uh, well, can I say Hall of Famer? I mean, you, you know, like you like a hundred <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> let's let's start there first. But just just talk about where you are. I mean, being the Commissioner of the Big East is phenomenal, and obviously the the, the schools you have in 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 your in your conference is just phenomenal with success of Connecticut men and women. Mm -hmm. Just talk about as Commissioner, what does that mean to you? Well, it's been so. I've been in this role now for uh, for eleven years. Coming yeah. up in July, um, the job kind of came out of the blue. I wasn't looking for it, but at that time, the old Big East had broken up. Yep. Um, schools had sort of been scattering. Frankly, mostly to go to the ACC for football. That's how the old Big East broke up. Mm. Okay. Uh, many of your schools were formerly in in our league. That's right. And That's then right. we're chasing you know greener pastures in football. So the group of schools that were, in effect, left behind were the so-called basketball schools. Mm -hmm. And they decided 12 years ago that they needed to control their own destiny. Mm -hmm. They decided to pull away as a block and, um, and add and think the old biggie schools like Villanova and St. John's and Georgetown and, and Providence College, mm -hmm. the true basketball schools, they decided to break away. They added um, Creighton Butler and Xavier, three proud basketball schools in the Midwest, to form what I still call the New Big East. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were hunting around once they got all this set in motion and in place, got a TV deal, did some other things. They needed somebody to bring it to life, and that's where I entered the picture. Wow. And so it's been an honor to do it. Um, you know, we've sponsored 22 sports. Uh, we don't sponsor football, but 22 others, including men's and women's basketball, at the top of that chain. And it's been, you know, it's been great when your, you know, when your schools win a national championship like ours did. <laughs> yeah, that makes uh, most sense. recently, a, a couple nights ago, um, it's it's kind of no better feeling. Yeah. So, very, very exciting position to be in right now for us. Outstanding. <laughs> wow, that's a great caveat to my question. We are dishing it up with Dr. Stroman. We have a special guest, uh, Commissioner of the Big East, Val Ack Ackerman. Um, talk about the excitement, um, going back to just women's sports. Yes. And you, we talked about with the teammates, you and Dr. Stroman, as you reflect on back then and now, um, and the excitement, 18 million viewers mm -hmm. um, on the championship game, um, what excites you most about that? And we had a caller earlier this morning that wanted to make sure we asked this question um, post Caitlin Clark going into the WNBA. Will that viewership remain? What are your thoughts on well, that? Yeah, sure. Well, I think the most exciting part is that it happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, is that is that this momentum and this swell of support and mainstream interest is happening? Yes. Um, and, it, and in sort of a crush. You know, I know mm -hmm. last year's women's final four, um, you know, raised eyebrows mm -hmm. yeah. because of um, of the great game. LSU, South um, Iowa, of course, you know, Don Staley, another Virginia uh, Cavalier, <laughs> mm -hmm. me and me and Deb um, sort of is crushing it at the coaching level. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, but it sort of happened at a time, you know, whenever, you know, over the last 25 years or so, it's been, we've had spikes in women's sports and women's basketball, mm-hmm. but I, 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 I have never seen um, this, you know, this kind of excitement mm-hmm. and momentum around, around women's basketball in particular. So, um, so that part, you know, for people like, you know, Debbie Stroman and me is just incredible. I mean, we were at UVA in the early years of Title IX, the men's mm-hmm. program at that time was led by classmates of ours, Jeff Jones, Ralph Sampson, yep. he's a good friend of both of ours, um, Jeff Lamp, Lee Raker, Ricky and Bobby <laughs> Stokes, the list goes on. Name oh, wow, name dropping. Were, <laughs> they were the ones. Yeah, yeah they were the ones. You know, there we were, like, starting out, and yeah. they were the ones, and they're going to the Final Four, and we're, you know, we're sort of uh, eating, you know, pregame meals at Shoney's occasionally. So it was um, a different day. And for uh, people like us to see what's happened um, as women's sports have grown, not just in, in the collegiate level, but at the pro level with the mm. WNBA, the National yes. Women's Soccer League, the Olympics are coming this summer. You all are going to get a whole nother round of stories to talk about mm-hmm. this summer when these mm-hmm. amazing you know, yes. men and women both are yes. performing in, in Paris. So it's been exciting. I'm glad I've been able to witness this in my lifetime. Uh, you know, there were times when you just weren't sure was going to real. You were really going to break through. That's I'll, right. I'll Thank you. We're we're talking with the commissioner of the Big East, uh, Val Ackerman, uh, and Dr. Stroman. We have Dr. Stroman on with us as well. And this question I have is for both of you guys, and I'm sure Dr. Stroman may have some for you too. But the question I have is for both of you: Now that we are here, you got you were on the front edge of Title IX, and now that we're here, I ask both of you as leaders now: What's next? Mm. I know my teammate there. Do you want to go first? Or do you want to take a stab? She passes the ball to you. you. She's got a well better. She's got a good crystal ball of her own, I think. Yeah. Well, what's next, of course, is just to continue to develop the game. Uh, we love the athleticism of the women. We love the opportunities, the doors that are being opened. But we have to be mindful to not compare the two games. Mm. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I've been really. Um, Disturbed, not surprisingly, but been disturbed by some of the commentator, by some of our male sports journalists Mm -hmm. and just criticizing uh, what took place. This is an absolute time to celebrate. Uh, But it's been everything from uh, Dawn Staley talking about her religion uh, to the transgender issue um, to uh, people's fashion. Uh, all these mm. things to criticize the game, uh, what the women are not doing. They're still not seeing enough dunks. Uh, let's mm. just not compare the two games. They are two separate games. You can enjoy both. People who've never really watched or participated in women's basketball, girls' basketball, come on over. There's enough room on the train to be involved. But don't come over with baggage and critiques of the women's game. It is a different game. Okay. Yeah. Very good advice. Good, good advice. Well, my, my chime in here is where, where I hope this goes, in addition to what um, like my friend said, is uh, I, think, I think, you know, this will hopefully become the money moment here because mm. that's, where, mm. that's where the biggest difference is right yes. now between men's and women's sports. I mean, okay. in men's sports, you're dealing with tremendous levels of investment. You're dealing with um, very significant what I call commercial outcomes, mm-hmm. right? You've got television um, paying money, you've got sponsors just paying money, you've got people buying tickets. And, and I'm talking about the pro level as much as the college level. But I really, what I really hope is that, and I think it's happening, particularly if you look at the viewership numbers, the, oh, yes. the number of people who are watching these Final Four games, I mean, those are eye-popping numbers. Mm-hmm. Yes. 18 million viewers for that championship game. I mean, it beat right. the guys, it, it beat the men's game. Mm-hmm. Um, in part because of the differences in the cable versus the, um, the the linear networks, but I think you know what I want to see is this money happening, gener- being generated, and then being invested back into the women's game, and particularly rewarding the players mm-hmm. because I, I, you know, that that is where, and I'll use the WNBA's example. That's where the league needs to go. We we need to have happened in women's basketball. What happened in women's tennis? Um, now, you know, you're seeing pay structures that are comparable, prize money that's comparable. And that's because the women's tennis game over the decades has, um, has carried its weight. It's generated its own audience and interest and, mm-hmm. and investment sort of streams, revenue streams. And that money, in turn, has gone back to the players. 
So mm. I hope that's, you know, what we're going to start to see more of, whether it's in basketball or soccer or any of these new sports on the horizon. Mm. Women's pro ice hockey's in a new league. Women's volleyball's got some stuff going on and now at the pro level, embryonic stages, but still. And, uh, and so if, if the money can start to catch up, that to me would be um, a, another amazing outcome. I mean, that's very, very interesting. Again, we're talking to now, you. Errol, yes. Errol, I just want to say, now you see why she's the commissioner. She went right to the economics. Uh-huh. Hey, but my, <laughs> I, 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 exactly. I, 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 yeah. And I was going to come right behind it, too. Unfortunately, right. yeah. And, and, and you're right, because she took part of my question, but I'm going to expand a little bit. Again, we're talking to Val Ackerman, who's the Big East commissioner and a founding uh, member, uh, if you will, a uh, founding president of the WNBA. So she has, yes. she knows what she's talking mm-hmm. about. So again, as we see the the interest level of of what, what happened uh, this year in in college basketball, uh, I'm just, what do you anticipate happening uh, again next week when Caitlin is drafted and all those other young women are drafted into the WNBA? Would it be a, a continual up upswell, if you will, financially and interest in the WNBA? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I really, I really think that I, I would be surprised if it wasn't. I hope, hope and expect that this will carry over. I mean, you know, the WNBA plays in the summer. When we started the league, we had good reasons for that. We thought it was a, it was a less crowded time of year for the league. Winter is really crowded, and when I mean crowded, I mean to try to get on TV, which is lifeblood of any league. Yeah, right. Winter is really crowded. I mean, you're up against the NBA, college basketball, football. Yeah. Yep. You know, NHL, baseball, um, late baseball in, uh, in the fall and early baseball in the spring. Mm-hmm. So we were very strategic about placing the league at a time of year to try to avoid a lot of that. So the league hasn't changed its mind on that in the last 20, whatever, eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, so right now it's a bang, 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 right? Because you've got the final four. That just took place. Yes. The WNBA draft, I think, is next early next week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Training camps, I think, start a couple within a couple weeks after that. <laughs> wow. Then the season is sort of go mid mid May, I think I was told. And then this year they've got the added um, sort of uh, you know dynamic of the Olympics, yes. which mm. they suspend their season for in July. So the players involved can leave, and the league is you know going you know doesn't want to go without them, so they wait till they get back, and then they go deeper into the fall. So for for you know, it's a it's a robust, very aggressive kind of sequence here for the players, particularly these college players. Um, and so, I think it just stands to reason that the interest, particularly in Caitlin Clark, but but others, will carry over. Um, she's expected to go number one, and the team that gets her, which I I'm told is the Indiana Fever, should benefit. I, I'm, I'm told that I'm sure season tickets are flying off the yeah, shelf. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And the games. And I think this interest will, will definitely we carry over. It can't not. And and we'll see what happens in women's college. She was sort of a phenomenon, but there's so many other great players that hopefully this uh, this uptick that we saw this year will continue next year with other players on other teams. And this interest in women's basketball won't sort of slide back. Right. But it'll just, you know, it'll just keep going and hopefully keep building. Well, outstanding. We have the commissioner for the Big East on, Val Ackerman. Mm-hmm. And, man, we, this has been such a pleasure. And I'm going to let Dr. Strowman close it out. I, we promise you we wouldn't keep you long, so yep. we want to mm-hmm. honor that. But now if you want to stay, <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to stay, but I got some other duties calling. You all are the best. This yeah. has been a lot of fun. Well, Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, I'll let yeah, Dr. Strowman close it out. Know, yeah, being the Olympic year, and, uh, you know, we see the competition with the men. And how, you know, it's not a guarantee that on the men's side we're going to win the gold every year. Would you just speak to our dominance on the women's side and whether or not you see it creeping where eventually mm, mm. it's going to be a struggle for us on the women's side? Yeah, you're, you're right about what happened on the men's side after 92. That first three yeah. team played yep. in Barcelona and won by 30 points every game. And then within a couple of Olympics, it all of a sudden it was close. Yep. And they've had, um, they've had some, a couple of stumbles along along the way, certainly in world, world championship competition. But, but on the women's side, it's been, uh, as, as you said, Deb, it, it's been a- absolute domination. Um, they, the gold medal run that they're in the midst of started in 96 in Atlanta. This year will be eight. They're going for eight straight, eight straight, which is, wow. I, I believe, un- unprecedented in sort of the national team you know, world. Um, the team... 
we, we've just got a great system here, in part because of this um, development sequence that we have. They play these girls. They start as girls playing grassroots basketball. They maybe play on a club team, maybe play on a high school team. Then they get into the NCA system, uh, which is very, very strong level of competition. And then they progress to the WNBA and then, you know, right on up the chain into the, you know, national team. And so we've got it going. Uh, other countries do have some good players, um, some of whom play in the WNBA in the summer. So we see a bit of them. Um, and there, there is some formidable competition among countries like Australia and I think mm-hmm. I'm China is actually really good this year. France, mm. Spain have been good. Mm. Um, but nothing close at this point. And so yeah. that's good for USA basketball. Mm-hmm. I think the rest of it, it's not as good for the competition because I think fans would like to see more more of a fight yeah. elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that'll happen as these other countries look to what we've done and, and work harder to build the strength of their program. But um, I think this year, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to jinx USAB's efforts here. They're you know, they do a great job, but I, I, I think this year they're going to be in great shape to keep that string going. And, again, hopefully the rest of the world can, you know, can start to take it up and we can see, like what we've seen in women's soccer, just sort of more competitive rivalries uh, mm-hmm. as these Olympics unfold. Well, I thank you so much for your friendship, your insight, for being mm-hmm. a part of the sports shop. Uh, appreciate all that you do for the Big East, for UVA, and, of course, the sport landscape across the world. Great. Well, thanks all. I, you know, thank you, my friend. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Great being with all of you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much. Hope you'll invite me back. Oh, we will. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll 